What's up guys, this is John from Cult Method. And if you've been following me via Twitter or the agency newsletter, you might have noticed that I've been a lot more prolific lately in terms of producing and publishing content. In fact, in the past 30 days, I published over 17,000 words on the Cult Method blog, which is just mind boggling to me. Um, and that's not, of course, counting the newsletters that I've been sending out nor is it counting the countless tweets that I've been sending out, which there are far too many of. Um, but, you know, if you were to have told me just a couple of months ago that I was going to publish, you, you know, one three to 4,000 words long article every single week, I would have laughed at that. Because while I'm certainly not new to writing, um, my personal blog has over two dozen blog posts. I've written, you know, before for the Cult Method blog. I've even been paid to, to make guest contributions to some larger publications. Writing for me was always really unpredictable and really inconsistent. I would only write when inspiration struck. And for me, that usually meant that I would publish you know, a handful of articles in rapid succession, and then it would just be like complete radio silence for months. Um, so I, I guess, first of all, you know, why was that is, is the first question that comes to mind. And I think, you, you know, blaming writer's block is is kind of a cliche, but it really was that. Just staring at that blank Google Doc and trying to to figure out what I wanted to say, it was it was terrifying, and it just completely paralyzed me. And I think you know, I think a lot of people can relate to that. First of all, and I think it comes from some form of self doubt. Now, for some people, it's because they feel like they have to produce the most authoritative, the most definitive and the most unique article on that specific subject. Whereas for others, it's, it's as simple as, you know, they just don't feel like they're very good writers. And for me, I think it was a little bit of both, but mainly I had this idea that anything that I write or say has to be completely unique to me. I can't use anyone else's ideas, which you know, looking back at it, and I'm still like in the process of realizing this fully, is a really absurd and, and stupid idea to have. But that was just like one of those self-limiting beliefs that I held on to for whatever reason. Now to, I, I guess to um, to segue into how I found the the cure I have this friend of mine, his name is Nick Brisson, and he's a content marketer, and he also owns a bunch of really profitable blogs. And Nick, by his own admission, isn't a very good writer. Um, but despite this, you know, he makes his living off of producing content for himself and for others. But the way he does that is, I, I guess, like a lot of well, really every single newspaper publication, every single periodical, by employing a team of writers and editors who handle the actual producing of the content for him, and he just oversees the operations. And I've always been kind of envious of Nick because, you know, man, what, what if I could do that for, for the Cult Method blog? That would make inbound marketing so much easier for, for me. But the one thing that's always been kind of stopping me from doing that is, is the fact that a freelance writer is never going to have the same amount of expertise that I have. Because if they do, they would be practitioners and not writers. They would actually be doing the things that I'm doing for clients and getting paid a lot more than they would writing about it. Um, and even if they did theoretically have all of the knowledge that I do, they're not going to use the same language. They, you know, they're not going to know 
what I think about certain issues, because of course there are a lot of different schools of, of thought within marketing and within branding and even within design. And so anything that a freelance writer could produce is, is just going to be kind of what everyone else puts out there because a freelance writer is going to spend, you know, some time do, doing research about the topic before they write about it. And they're going to base that research not on books, not on scholarly papers. They're going to base it on, you know, doing like a Google search on the topic and reading some of the blog posts that come up. And so it's just kind of regurgitating the same <clears throat> the same content over and over again. But, so I really, and, and I don't want to do that. First of all, I don't want to just pollute the, the internet with shitty regurgitated content. And I certainly don't want that <clears throat> content to, to represent me or my business. And I'm sure if, especially if you're a service-based business or a consulting firm or something like that, you feel the same way. But so, so that was kind of what was holding me back. But I couldn't let go of, of the idea of, you know, what if someone could just take this off my hands? What if someone else could, could handle this for me, make it easier? And all of a sudden, what, what I realized was, you know, I'm always reading like these articles and, and these, you know, claims by other branding people or, or agencies just to kind of see what's out there. And I always find myself getting really annoyed because what they say is either just completely ass backwards, you know, just plainly incorrect or it's, you know, a bunch of myths that have been perpetuated through, you know, just not doing enough research and not checking the, you know, sources properly. <clears throat> and that really bothers me. And I always think like, man, I could do a much better job at writing this article, um, but I never do. But I realized that, you know, really what's stopping me is that blank page. If I had a shitty article to, to start with, I could make that 10 times better. And so that's what I set out to do. So actually what I've been doing recently is I've been paying two different freelance writers to you, you know write about specific topics that I assign to them and what they come back with is you know inevitably inevitably going to be this kind of you know mediocre blog post between maybe 1000 to 1400 words or something like that. Um, and I don't say that it's mediocre because they're bad writers. It's just, you, you know, if you're doing research for an hour or two before writing an article, if, if even that, um, you, you're never going to reach, you're, you're never going to have enough depth or enough nuance in that article um, for it to be anything other than mediocre. So... Yeah, I've been getting these mediocre 1,200, let's call it 1,200 word blog posts. And what I've been doing is I've been treating them not as finished blog posts, but as first drafts. And I will go in and successively change out every single section of that blog post or of that draft. And I'll look, you know, like the intro section. What can I do to make this more enticing? What can I do to bring more value here? What can I do to fix any of the mistakes or the, the bad assumptions here? And then I go on to the next section. And also, what can I do you know, to add multimedia? Can I create an image here? Can I create a, a GIF? Can I create a graph? Can I bring in you know, external sources? And I do that for every single section. I try to make it go deeper. I try to make it more nuanced. I try to, you know, definite, definitely align it with with my point of view, uh, which I think is fairly different from a, a lot of other, um, especially the kind of cookie cutter marketing advice that you see out there and design advice or what have you. Um, and just trying to make, turn that 
mediocre piece of content into the best possible article that you can that you could create and so that's what i've been doing essentially and it sounds like a lot of work but it's actually a lot easier than starting from scratch and and just not knowing you know where to even begin for hours upon hours so it's it's really streamlined the process for me and another really cool benefit that i've seen from this is because i'm um my personality is is you know i'm very frugal let's call it and so committing to you know knowing that i've committed to to spend hundreds of dollars every month producing this content has incentivized me to take on more more of the work myself and so i've actually been two of the articles that i published last month was were written by me from scratch um without any anyone else's involvement and they're the the ones in case you've read them or in case you want to take a look and see how they stack up to to some of the other recent articles um they're the ones about the the paradox of choice and about consumer psychology and those have actually been some of the more, more successful articles that i published recently um so yeah and i think that's you know partly that's because I'm now financially incentivized to to write in order to save more money um but it's also because I've gained momentum and also gained confidence I think from editing the the freelance writers work and just kind of getting new ideas from that and and yeah just gaining momentum and and you know gaining steam I I think that is something that's really underrated uh um, and it's also something that's so difficult to do if you're starting from just a blank page and you're doing everything yourself from scratch so yeah this tactic i guess has been really a game changer for for me personally and i hope that you know if you decide to try it that it becomes really successful for you too and i'm not sure how interested you guys will be if anyone is even watching this right um <laughs> but um yeah i'm not really sure how interested you guys are in this kind of thing but if you want me to i can i i thought about making like a follow up video where i go into the more tactical aspects of this like showing you what the exact workflows are um exactly how much input i give to the writers before they start writing um because i also do that i give them like here are some resources to check out uh you know here are my thoughts on this you should definitely include this do not include that y- you know that kind of thing just to kind of streamline the process a little bit make it easier for me further down the line so that i don't have to change y- you know quite as much um and and also you know just how much do i pay the writers so if you guys are interested in that please let me know down below in the comments and Yeah also I'm going to be publishing uploading a lot more videos to this channel so if you enjoyed and if you want to see more about more content about branding about marketing and about design uh especially for small businesses definitely stick around you know hit the subscribe button and smash that like button and I'll catch you soon bye